Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Today, Andrew and I are talking about culture and the importance of culture in a martial arts school. Stick around. If you're new to the show, you may not know me or my voice, or maybe you're watching on YouTube or somewhere else, and you can actually see us. I'm Jeremy Lesniak, founder here at Whistlekick, joined by my often co-host, Andrew Adams. Andrew, how are that, you? That's me. That's, that's me. you. That is that's you. That's me. I'm, I'm well. I'm doing well. <laughs> Get, getting over a little bit of a cough, a little bit of a cold situation going on, but otherwise, uh, I'm well. Are, are you bringing your, uh, uh, your sexy radio voice? with the oh, cold is that yeah. there you go there you, you go. know it <laughs> well um as i i say often if this is your first time listening to the show you picked a weird one to come in on but maybe i should stop saying that because it seems like all of them are weird now at least the oh, openings yeah. and i'm gonna blame you for that because that's they fair. weren't they weren't really weird until you joined but that's not a bad thing we have a lot of fun here and why do we have fun well we have fun because we love traditional martial arts it's why we do everything that we do at Whistlekick. What do we do at Whistlekick? We'll go to whistlekick.com, see all the stuff that we do at Whistlekick. We've got products, projects, services, tons of stuff going on over there. One of the ways that we monetize the show and our overall mission is through the store, whistlekick.com. If you find something in there that you like, which is it's changing all the time, you can use the code podcast15 to get yourself 15% off. And if you want to check out more about this show, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com is the place to be. We drop a new page for every single episode that we do, transcripts and links and images and all kinds of good stuff. And why do we do it? Well, it's to connect and educate and entertain traditional martial artists throughout the world. If that mission means something to you, if you're on board with us, if you're part of the family, well, you can support us in a number of ways. Everything from sharing episodes and leaving reviews to supporting our Patreon. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash whistlekick. What do we do at Patreon? Well, we post additional exclusive content, stuff you're not going to find anywhere else. We do behind the scenes stuff. <laughs> Andrew's got it up on the screen. Patreon.com slash whistlekick. Uh, for as little as two bucks a month, you can find out who's coming on the show. Uh, at higher tiers, you get bonus audio, video, book drafts, ex exclusive access to me. You want me to teach you some stuff? I'll teach you some stuff. We got all kinds going on over there. Go check it out. It's more that we could talk about. Oh, and you even get free free merch, free stickers. I, can, I don't know if I can call it free because you, you did pay for it, but we, it's stuff that we didn't used to do and now we do it and we didn't raise the price. So. And it might not even be stickers depending on what tier you're in. Yeah, it, it, it goes up from there. It starts at the stickers, even in the $2 a month. Show me anywhere else where somebody, where you give somebody $2 a month and they actually give you something back. Nowhere but martial arts radio. Okay. Andrew. Yes culture culture We've both been part of a number of martial arts schools yeah so whether we think we have a culture in a school or not you might say somebody might say well you know there, there's really no culture here we just train that's a culture yeah yep. anytime you have a group of people doing things in a place for a period of time there's a culture that comes to be all right do we need to define culture does everybody know what culture is I mean, it's it's just how the school. Uh, okay, I think it would be better to define by saying what it isn't. We're not talking okay. about how the the school is run and how classes are taught necessarily. Like, we're talking about the overall philosophy of the dojo or dojang or your training hall or whatever. And I think for me, uh, uh, the culture has a lot more to do with what happens off the floor than it does on mm. the floor. Not always the case, but that's probably a gr that's probably the best way for someone who's struggling with understanding. You know, what, what do you mean by the culture in a martial arts school? What happens outside of training is probably the best way to understand it. Do people socialize? Mm -hmm. Does the instructor kick everybody out right after class and people just go on? their own way do people show up 30 45 minutes an hour early to work on their own stuff and hang out with people are people who train friends outside of their training these yep. are all elements of a culture yep i mean uh, i would say that not all of the culture of a school has to deal with stuff that happens off the mat agreed but but i would say a good portion of it would be i i think it's the easier window 
into what that culture is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because there are a lot of things that happen on the floor, so to speak, during training that different people are going to see in different ways. And depending on your time in, yep. you might find some of them to be part of that school's culture. They may also just be part of the way martial arts is taught in a particular lineage or system, et cetera. Exactly. So the premise of this episode is not what is it or why is it or should it exist? Because I don't think you could have a group that doesn't have a culture. It's going to happen. Yep, agreed. The question is, why is it important? And I guess by extension, if it's important, we're assuming it's important. If you and I agree it is important. Yep. How do you leverage it? How, yeah, do, you how do you how do you help bring new students in the school? How do you help get them indoctrinated into the culture that you want at your school? Right. So I think first, let's go a little bit deeper on how culture is created, because I, I think that's the first step. Whether or not you as a school try to create a culture, you will have a culture. The yep. way the people show up, that, that's, that's going to be there. There's a culture at your professional job. There's a culture in your home. Culture exists anytime there's a group of people. I can't underscore that enough. And in my experience, most martial arts schools ignore the culture of their school. They may pay attention to cultural aspects of what they train, but they don't think about the school's culture and how it can benefit them. Absolutely. I would wholeheartedly agree. I think it's a it's an often overlooked aspect of your school that can really hurt your school if you don't pay attention to it. Yeah. Here's a great example of where it can get, it can be negative. If you have a small school and someone joins and they join for, let's say, the wrong reasons, or they have a bad attitude, or they come in from another martial arts style, but they don't want to change what and how they do. You know, they used to do style A and now they're doing style Y. And they're like, but this is how I've always done it. And if the instructor or instructors aren't willing to say, no, no, you're here, you do it our way now, that can negatively impact the culture. If you've been training for a couple of years, you've probably seen someone who negatively impacts the culture and hopefully mm -hmm. somebody who positively impacts the culture. What are some ways that culture can be positively impacted? Let's, let's focus on the good stuff. Well, I mean, using your example, um, someone comes into your school that has experience in another style. Um, it gives an opportunity for learning, not just, for, I mean, the, the obvious is you can learn from that person, right? Use that as an opportunity to learn. Well, uh, your style did it this way. Well, let's talk about it and why. And then why do, why do we in our school, why do we do it this way? So it's, it's it really a two way street, yeah. right? So everybody gets to learn from that type of interaction. Uh, but that involves having an instructor that is open-minded about other stuff. And we both know that there are instructors out there that are very, very good about that. And there are some instructors that are um, maybe could work on that a bit. Sure. And, and, you know, that's not to say that in order to have a positive culture in your martial arts school, you have to permit cross-training nope. within anything. It, Culture does not have to be anything. Culture is kind of the average of the, let's say it, the attitudes of the people involved. Mm -hmm. So if you want, as an instructor, if you want people to cross train, that can be part of the culture. If you don't, it can still be a positive part of the culture in that, let's say, I don't know, you, you acknowledge it, you recognize it, say, that's great. That's not what we do here. This is what we do here. Mm -hmm. if people are excited about what they do if they are thankful happy you know throw a bunch of positive words in here then the culture is okay yeah do we have to unpack what it is more no the, i i okay. don't i don't think okay. so all right because then the next piece that i want to go to that people don't realize and i've seen this in martial arts schools i've seen it in professional settings too 
given enough time and enough critical mass, a culture will exist separate from the people that are involved. It becomes its own thing. And here's, here's a great example. I have seen businesses, when I, when I think of these examples, they're, they're more businesses, but they could very easily be martial arts schools, yeah. where a group of people got together, started a business, and some of them were kind of toxic. And they injected a toxic culture, you know, backstabbing or undermining or things like that. And even when that person or people left, those things still happened. Yeah, now, the people that were still doing it weren't people that had set out to do it. It's just what that used to. average of those people became. It was kind of in yep. the center of what they did. And just removing the person didn't change the culture because the culture had been institutionalized. Yeah, yeah, it's very easy. Uh, the word I have often heard used in this type of scenario is that that person can be can be a cancer to the organization, very cancerous. And cancer, as we know, often grows. It gets bigger. Mm -hmm. And you might think just because that person has left, you've removed all the cancer. But but that's not to say other people need to be removed, but you need to work harder at the edges to get rid of that type of uh, culture that that person has put everyone else a part of. I think it's important to acknowledge, acknowledge, I was about to combine some words that don't belong together. <laughs> I was doing that, doing that German thing where you mash words together and make one long word. Culture becomes institutionalized. And I think it's really important that we understand and acknowledge that because if someone looks at the culture of their school, you know, school owner and instructor looks at the culture in their school and they say, you know, I listened to this episode, I would like to do some things differently. I'd like to try some things and build a better culture. I want, you know, I want to shift us from a group that, let's say, the only time people see each other is when they're training to, you know, I'd love to see some of these people become friends and socialize on the weekends and things like that. It takes time. And it takes a tremendous amount of effort. In fact, the effort to overcome an institutionalized culture, it has to be greater than the effort that went into creating it. Yeah. And it can't be forced. That's the other thing. It, it Well, it can be, but it's not going to work. Yeah. Well, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like you can't, you can't force two people to be friends. Right. Right. You can create the environment. Correct. You can create a situation where, you know watch just about any movie and you will see a series of circumstances whereby a romantic coupling happens right it's not that one of them set out to i'm going to make this person love me they just they went through something dramatic right and there's so now there's something that happens you can do the same sort of things whether or not you yeah. want your students dating you know i i, I think Anybody who's been listening a while knows my feelings on that. But it takes time and it takes intent. So we know that culture is important. We know that it exists. We know it builds its own organic, almost life. It is, it, it is an entity unto itself. And we know that changing it requires effort and intent. Why might you want to change the culture in a school? Well, we discussed earlier that there could be bad parts of the culture that have just inherently been there for a while. So there may be reasons you want to get rid of that. What, what um, are some examples? Let's let's give people some examples of negative or yeah, negative elements of the culture. Um, I think talking about stuff on the mat on the mat side, you know, students that uh, continually hit and go harder than they need to. Um, that sends a message that that's okay, especially if they're upper ranked students, sure. um, that sends a message down the line. Um, but I also, you know, I think we need to consider, we said at the beginning that a lot of the more of the culture is stuff that happens off the mat. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we should make a point to come up with some ones that, that happen off the mat as well. Um, and I think just, this is such a dumb thing, but being polite and courteous when someone comes in the door, 
you know, you know, Hey, how's it going today? You know, like, um, having that social interaction with each other before and after class, I think is important, even if it's happening in the school, but it's not Matt related, um, creates a warm and welcoming environment for others. And I have been in schools where that doesn't happen. You walk in the door and you go in the changing room and nobody said hi to me at all. It was my first day and it was my first mm. time going to this particular school. I walked in and there were, you know, three or four other people in the changing area and not a word was said. I was a brand new student. No one had no idea who I was. It That's was rough. a really weird feeling. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think if you want the easiest way to, to kind of sketch this out, etiquette leads to culture. The formalized elements that you request, I don't think you can mandate, but request of your students in a school lead to the culture. Here's the best example and it. Some people are going to go, oh my God, yes. People showing up late to class. I know schools where everyone shows up late. Yeah. Why does everyone show up late? Because the instructor permits everyone to show up late. There are no consequences and there's no expectation. Yeah. How would we change that? How do we, how do we stop? Because I think that's a good example and it's one that is simple enough for people to wrap their head around. Um, I mean, I think it's, it's a fine line. Mm -hmm. You could go the, the Uber hard route and say the instructor could say to that person that showed up late, you know, go home, you showed up late, you can't come to class. Mm -hmm. That is the extreme that I don't think either of us would, would um, be on board with. No, because then people will just, if they're not going to be able to get there on time, they're not going to show up. Correct. That's not the behavior you want. You want people. To show I think up. it needs to be, it needs to be recognized. Right. And, and I think you don't want to, chastise the student necessarily in front of the whole class i agree you know you don't want to you know you know tear them apart in front of the class but the entire class needs to see this person showed up late um you know sit down over there do you know a warm up on your own or whatever but clearly you're not being a part of the group right now because you chose to show up late you can join us later yep. that sets the example for the others oh he was late and didn't get to do this thing. So if I'm late, the same thing's going to happen to me. You know, it, it's important that that sort of that sort of scenario is seen by everyone, mm -hmm. because that helps to change the culture. Sure, I, and that's one way to do it for sure. I, I'm I'm an advocate of, hey, if you're you everybody knows if you're going to show up late, you don't just step into class. Mm -hmm. right? And there may be schools where they don't have that rule. Well, that's an easy rule to set. If you're going to show up, if you're going to be late, you don't just step in, you wait on the side until you are brought into class. And there are Correct. a number of ways you can do that. I, I'm an advocate of you, you know, in the middle of a set of drills or whatever, when you can, you get over them and you have a very quick private conversation with them. Why are you late? Yep. What's going on? And you yep. look them right in the eye. And if it's the fourth time in four weeks, you and I need to have a chat outside of class. Yeah. Right. I, I praise publicly, criticize privately and martial arts. We kind of blur that line of what's criticism and what's correction, but scolding someone for being late, definitely criticism. Now what's going to happen if you make that change, if you take a school where everybody was showing up late and you suddenly hold people to different expectations. Well, you can't transition look like, well, I mean, you're when you say different expectations, you mean across the board for everyone, not yeah. treating people differently. Yeah, it, okay. you know, let's let's we'll continue with this example that yeah. you have. I mean, it's going to take some time. It's going to take time. People, let's say you have a class of ten people. One person showed the first guy shows up late. Those nine other people will see it, but the next class, there's different people there. They didn't see it. It's going to take time. It's not something that's going to be instantaneous. It's like everything else that we do. If you've allowed people to show up late for five years, there's there, that culture is deeply rooted in flexibility. You, you could look at it in a positive way. 
we're flexible. You know, we want people to come to class. We don't mind if they show up 15 minutes late because, you know, they, they had to work late. Jobs are important. Families are important, right? Like it's not, uh, it's not a judgment. You have to create the culture that you want. And you have to understand that manipulating culture takes time. Yeah. This is not a, you know, again, five years versus it's not day one, week one, month one. It might be six months. What are other things you can do? You can make sure everybody understands the expectations. Clear, what, what's the phrase you use? Clear and what communication? Open, clear communication. Open, clear communication is the hallmark of every relationship, whether it's a professional relationship, a personal relationship, a martial arts student instructor relationship. Absolutely. It's not, let, let's let's say you're, you're at wit's end and you're like, oh, I'm sick of everybody showing up late. I want to change this. You could yell at everyone. You could send out a nasty email. I'm sick of everybody showing up late. You don't respect me. Or you send out an email. Hey, everybody, uh, wanna let you know, we are going to change the way we handle people showing up late. If you are late moving forward, if you show up after we have started bowing in or started warm-ups or started whatever here's what i want you i want you to stand on the side or i want you to go warm up on your whatever it is whatever you behavior you want them to take this is a this is not optional this is a requirement and if you choose to give them a reason yeah i find that the distractions of people coming in late are negatively impacting the people who show up on time If you are calm, confident, clear, and open about <laughs> how you communicate this change, they will mostly be on board. Now, there are plenty of changes you could make that are bigger and may have some fallout, but you've got to trust yourself as yeah. the keeper of the culture, because a martial arts instructor is the keeper of the culture in a school. Absolutely. It, it is It is the most res- most important element that we never talk about. Yeah, I would agree. I also think there needs to be, if, if you are going through this, pro- if you're listening to this episode and realizing, you know what, I want to change some things about the culture in my school. Um, I think having a, 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 a really open-hearted conversation with your top students mm-hmm. is right. required. It has to happen um, because everything trickles down from Mm -hmm. them, you know, and the reality is, and there are obviously exceptions to this rule, but your top students likely see more of what's going on culture wise in your school than you do as the instructor. You may be the keeper of the culture. They are the, the um, implementers of the culture, you know, in a typical school, let's say, you know, you've got a handful of low rank black belts and, you know, some, high rank colored belts under them sort of a thing yeah you know, they're the ones that the way they act that's how everybody else sees it they understand they're they're going to look at you and say okay that's sensei that's you know seven um they act differently because of who they are but you know they look at the high rank students that's how i'm supposed to act and if Correct. you don't get them on board you'll change nothing yeah you yeah, might absolutely. be able to swing it temporarily, but it's not it's not going to be permanent. Yeah. So ha- having that that discussion with those students will pay off dividends in the long run because they're the ones that are going to help implement the culture sh- shift that you would like. Having those conversations both one on one in any groups is important. You can get better feedback from a one on one conversation, but you're going to get better buy in with understanding from the group, because remember, this is a group change you're trying to implement, not a one-on-one change. You may have people who don't want to adapt. You may need to, if the cultural change is important enough, you may have to kick people out. And sometimes that is the best thing you can do. Again, take it back to a professional setting. If you have someone who is maintaining the toxic culture in a workplace, and everyone knows it is them contributing to that and you have tried to get them to stop doing whatever they're doing and then they are no longer there one day 
that helps people understand that there are consequences to not following the cultural guidelines or manifest that you have laid out as the boss or the instructor. Yeah. And you could go the other side as well, that you could be an instructor listening to this and be so far removed from your students that you might not even know what the culture is. And so, again, I would encourage you to have discussions with your upper ranked students because they're going to know what the culture is, I suspect, better than you. If, if you're listening to this and are unsure, then for, then definitely they're going to have a better idea. Yeah. I would say that for most schools, the culture is the biggest indicator of whether or not they will be successful, have the number of students they want, whether those students will be the type of students they want. If your culture is misaligned with your vision, things will not go the way you want them to. Yep. If you say, you know, why is it students join and then three months later they're gone consistently, there's something in the culture. If people show up and they never talk to each other after class. They they take off their uniforms or whatever, and they they put their stuff in their bag and they walk out. And they're not lingering to have a conversation. That's culture. If you mm-hmm. can't throw them out because they're all great friends and they want to chat, but you want to turn off the lights and go home, that's also culture. Culture is the good and the bad. The better you can understand it, the better you recognize what can be done to adjust it the more likely you are to have the culture that you want leading to the school that you want and checking all your boxes, hitting your goals. Now, how do you indoctrinate a new student into that culture? Whether you try to or not, it's gonna happen. Yeah. Just Uh, by being in the room, they're gonna pick up on what's going on. And that's, I think another great, maybe counter example isn't the best word, but we'll use it where you know i i had my my top student working with this new student and things were great for like three weeks and then all of a sudden they started doing stuff differently and weird and they're showing up late ah there's your culture your culture swayed them from what you wanted because everybody else apparently was doing stuff differently yeah anything to add no i don't think so i i I think that's good i think i think take a look sit down and take a look at what your culture is see if it's the culture you want and maybe it is which would be awesome like that there's nothing wrong with that um make sure that your upper rank students know the culture that you expect to have especially if you plan to have some sort of a change um and go from there and for anyone who's watching or listening and they're saying you know jeremy andrew our culture is amazing. It's perfect. There isn't a thing I would change about it. Would you like to have more students bring their friends to class as potential students? That's culture too. Yeah. Culture is not just good, bad. Culture is marketing. Culture is all of it. It's all rooted in the culture of your school. And if there's anything at all that you would dream of changing, start with how to change it as part of the culture, reward the behavior that you want. Yep. Okay, cool. Well, if you've got feedback, if you've got stuff to add, if you have questions, hey, how do we unpack this, that, or the other? Let us know. Jeremy at whistlekick.com, Andrew at whistlekick, martialartsradio.com. Of course, you can follow us on social media. We are at whistlekick. And if you head on over to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, you're going to find the transcript, you're going to find show notes and all kinds of good stuff for this and every other episode we have ever done. If you're up for supporting us, you've got a bunch of ways. Patreon.com slash whistlekick is the main one that we ask for, but you can also buy something at whistlekick.com with the code podcast15, as well as leave a review anywhere you can think of. Grab one of our books on Amazon uh, or just, you know, Tell your friends about what we're doing and our love and support for the traditional arts. That's all for today. Until next time, train Train hard, hard, smile, smile, and have have a great great day. day.